Hey guys, James here, and in this video, I'm going to go over how to focus stack an image. So this is something that comes up in landscape photography a lot. Um, a lot of people think that they can just shoot at a really small aperture, a really high aperture, like f18, f22, somewhere on there, uh, f14, whatever, and get everything in the image nice and sharp. And true, uh, a lot of times that is the case, especially if everything is kind of far off. But the, really. What some people don't know is sometimes you can get away at wide angle shooting like f2.8 and get everything in focus. If everything is far enough away, eventually you're going to reach that infinite focus. Um, so where it doesn't really work is if you are shooting at a really wide angle, like in this image here, and you have something really far off in the distance, and then you have really something that's probably like inches away from your lens. In that case, even f14 f18 something like that that's not going to be able to get everything in focus so uh, i'll show you here let me zoom in this is an image that i actually took a few years ago this was in zion national park and if we zoom in on the first image here we'll go all the way down to the bottom okay and you can see here that everything in the foreground is really nice and sharp so these are just some leaves uh, with raindrops from this passing storms on them uh, and look up here at the information, I'm shooting with a Canon uh, 1DS Mark III, 1635 lens at f14, ISO 100, one fifth of a second. Um, everything was nice and calm that morning. There was virtually no wind, so I was plenty comfortable shooting at a slower shutter speed like that with all the leaves here because nothing was really moving. Uh, but look, when I scroll up here, you'll see that as soon as I get to the middle part of the image, everything is really becoming soft. And especially in the very back, everything back there is, you know, really, really soft. So, you know, you can get into like hyperfocal distance and, and all that theory. But even on the second image, okay, so now on the second one, I focused on the middle part of the image. I think I used this bush right here, actually. So everything here is nice and sharp. The cliffs are a little bit sharper. The uh, foliage here in the top is sharp, but as I come down here to the bottom, everything is getting soft. Okay, so now we'll go up to the very top image. And now you can see I focused on, let it load up here real quick. Uh, here I focused on the cliff and made sure that that edge of the cliff line right there was perfectly sharp. Now, the middle part of the image is a little bit sharp here, but not as sharp as the other one. And then you can see down here that everything is really, really out of focus. Okay, so I hope I've sold you on the fact that sometimes focus stacking is necessary in landscape photography. Um, what we want to do next is take the images and merge them together as a focus stack. And to do that, you make sure that each image is selected. So if you just had one image like this, it's not going to work. You have to select all three of them. Okay, so we're going to have the first one selected here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click the last one, which will select all of them. Next, I'll go up to photo and then edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, we're ready to merge these layers together uh, as a focus stack. But before you do that, you need to align the layers. And this is a step that some people tend to miss. What you'll notice here is as I go through the image, it looks like the image is shifting a lot. See that? I mean, of course, the clouds are moving, but you can see the little shift. And that means that the images aren't aligned, even though I was on a tripod. And what's happening is when you turn that focus dial, um, when you have something really close, really far away, it's going to shift the perspective of the scene just very slightly. So what you want to do is highlight all of the layers over here on the right hand side. So just like in Lightroom, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click the last one uh, or the bottom one. And then I'm going to come up to edit and then click auto align layers. And the auto option here is fine. So we'll just hit OK. This is a really quick process. Okay, and just like that. Okay, so now watch as I go through the layers again. So turn this one off and turn this one off. The only shift we're seeing now 
or the only change that we're seeing is some of the pixels around the edge of the frame disappearing. Okay, so what we want to do, what's happening is that Photoshop is shifting the image around uh, on each layer to make sure that it lines up with the other layers. So we'll grab the crop tool and bring in the corners here. So I like to just hold down the shift key and bring up the bottom left corner and then bring down the bottom right corner. Okay, like that. Then we'll hit enter. Okay, so you can see that there's a little bit left on the edge there. So I didn't pull it in quite enough. So we'll come up a little bit more there like that. Okay, I'm guessing that should be enough. So now we'll turn this layer on, make sure we don't have any dead pixels there. And this one, don't have anything there. And you can see just as I scroll through this, how sharp everything is in certain parts of the frame. Okay, so now we're ready to merge the images together as a focus stack. So again, highlight all the images, go back to edit, and now instead of auto align, we're gonna hit auto blend. And then you have the option of doing a panorama or stacked images, and this is a focus stack, so we're gonna do that second option. The seamless tones and colors, that really helps if you're taking like images at slightly different exposures. Um, you can really just leave it on, it's fine, at least in, in my experience it is. So we'll hit OK. And then Photoshop is going to go through that and merge everything together. So now, just like that, we have a focus stacked image. Let me zoom in to 100% here, and we'll start from the bottom and go up. So look, we have all the leaves in focus here, and as I scroll through the image, you'll see that everything in the middle part of the image is nice and sharp. And then we'll go up to the top and the cliff again is nice and sharp. So it's that easy. Everything, every single aspect of this image is tack sharp now and that's just great. So um, that's it guys, that's how you focus stack an image. Uh, if you've got a few more minutes, I'm gonna actually go through and finish up this image. Uh, I don't like to leave these things undone. So um, if all you came here to do is learn how to focus stack, we're done with it, that's it. If you wanna see how I you know, process some images, um, this one in particular, stick around. So now that we are done focus stacking the image, I'm going to hit um, Shift Command N, which is gonna create a new blank layer. I'm gonna call this one Cleanup. You can call it Healing, or you can just not name it. I, I don't a lot of the times, to be honest. Um, from there, I'll hit J to bring up my clone healing, uh, or my spot healing brush, rather. And then, if you've never used this before, you want to come up here to the top where your options come up for the tool that you have selected. And you can either hit Content Aware or Proximity Match, but Content Aware, a lot of the times, is going to work the best. And then here's where it's really important. You want to make sure that you have Sample All Layers. If I don't have that checked, it's only going to be looking at this blank layer to figure out what pixels to replace the spot that I'm saying to heal. And since this is a blank layer, it wouldn't have anything to sample, so it just wouldn't work. But with sample all layers, it's going to look at everything beneath it. Okay, so let's zoom in. And I'm just going to start drawing over these dust spots. And you can see that it's just going to go in and fix those right up. All right. I don't think there are too many in this image, but let's go through. Some of these ones on the cliff kind of just blend in. I don't even know if that's a dust spot or not. Uh, if I can't tell, then probably nobody else will be able to either. Uh, okay, there's one there. And that should probably do it. Go back. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, see if I can correct the color a little bit in this image. So I'm going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E to merge all the layers up. And then I like to just go up to the image drop down and click Auto Color. And you can sometimes just play around with like Auto Contrast too, see what that does, and hit Auto Tone. And then I'll just turn the layer on and off. So this is the difference that it's making. It added a little bit of contrast, and it looks like it took out a little bit of a magenta color cast in the image. From there, I'll take it down to 100%, up to 100 with the opacity, and then just kind of get it to a happy medium ground. So let's just choose like 70-ish percent, 63, okay. I think that looks good there. 
Okay, the next thing I want to do is create um, a little bit more contrast and drama in the image. So I'll reach for the levels adjustment layer. And what I like to do with this one is bring the highlights in and then bring the midtones towards the highlights. And it's going to create a nice amount of drama and contrast in the, in the uh, image. If I turn this on and off, you'll see the difference there. But what it's done is taken all of this fog up in the background and kind of just blown it out. So to counteract that, I'm going to do what's called luminosity masking. And the first thing I want to do, this is more complicated, so just try to bear with me. First thing I want to do is invert this layer here. So I'm going to hit Command I, which is going to throw a black mask and cover up that levels adjustment layer. So remember that it's still there. Then we're going to go to Channels. And I'm going to go through here and see which one creates a really good mask. So this is what we want to keep in mind. This is not a black and white image or version of the image, although it looks like one. This is a mask. And this is a mask that's based off of the luminance of the image. Um, more specifically, it's creating a mask that is 50% uh, bright, uh, which means that the 50% brightest pixels are selected and masked around. and then. It kind of just grades down from there. It's kind of confusing to get the hang of, but um, that's what's going on here. And then it's each of these channels is shifted towards those colors of the image. So blue gives me a really nice selection of the cliffs, and then the fog is really nice and um, uh, separated from all of that. So what you can do now is command click the blue channel, and that loads up all these little marching ants. From there, I'm going to come down to the bottom here and click New Layer from Selection. I'm going to deselect that, and then I'm going to come down to this Alpha 1 channel and hit Command L to bring up another le Levels Adjustment Layer. So this lets me really hone in on the image to create a really nice and precise mask. So I want to make sure that the fog is really separated from the foreground. Okay, so something like that. Okay, uh, another thing that kind of gets complicated sometimes is the difference between black and white in masks, and white reveals while black conceals. So if we go back to the layers and the adjustment layer that I wanted to create, um, I want to apply this adjustment layer to the cliff and to the foreground. So I want the um, cliff in the foreground to be white on the mask, and I want to conceal that adjustment layer from the fog in the background. So I want the fog to be black in the mask. Okay. So if we go back to the alpha channel, you'll see that it's kind of the opposite. So I'm going to click Command I to invert the mask, and now we have white on the cliffs and black in the fog. So I'll Command click it to load it up as a selection. And I'm going to go over to my mask and make sure that the mask is selected. I'm going to hit Command Control H, but you can also go up to um, View, and then uh, what is it? Show, and then Selection Edges. You can just turn it off there, and that hides those marching ants, so you don't have to be distracted by them. They're still there. You have to keep that in mind. But now, look, as I uh, bring up my brush and then paint with white, you can see that as I paint that in. It's going to just bring in that selection to the foreground. And it's going to leave it out of the highlights everywhere in the image so that I don't blow anything out. Right, just like that. And now, let's see here, go around the edges. You can see if I command or option rather click the mask, you can see what's happening here. And it's keeping it out of the fog, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, so that is basically it um, for the levels adjustment layer. Now what I want to do is, um, and again, remember that I hid those marching ants. Now I want to do something else in Photoshop, but those marching ants are still there, which means a selection is still loaded. So what I really need to do, and what you have to remember to do each and every time, is you want to deselect those marching ants. And to do that, you just hit Command D, okay? So from here, I'm going to, again, merge everything together, Shift, Option, Command, E. And then I'm going to go up to Filter, Other, and High Pass. 
And this is a form of sharpening or a way of sharpening your images. I like to leave it at three pixels. And it gives you this really weird kind of looking version of your image, which kind of throws you off at first. But you want to just take your blend mode over here and set it to either overlay or soft light. Overlay is going to be a little bit more intense. If we zoom in to 100% here and come down to the leaves, a little bit closer actually, and just toggle this on and off, this is what it's doing. So it's just kind of making everything pop a little bit. It's subtle, but very effective. Okay, so with sharpening, you don't want to sharpen every aspect of your image. You don't want to globally make any adjustments uh, because not every part of the image needs you know any adjustment that you're making most of the time. So I, I don't want to sharpen the fog because there's nothing in the fog to sharpen. I want that to be nice and creamy and smooth. So what I can do in this case is just use the same mask that I used down here. So I'm going to uh, hold down the option key and then just drag it up to the top layer. And now we have a mask where black is concealing that sharpening in the fog and white is revealing the sharpening in everything else. Okay, that is it guys. Um, I can't see anything else that I need to do this image right now. So if you guys have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below and I will get to you uh, as soon as possible. All right, thanks guys, bye.